Hi, I'm Scott McLean from TranceMusicMastery.com, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use the Zebra 2 comb filter and also just describe what comb filtering is in general. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to move Zebra 2 out of the way for a moment. Right now I just have the initialized patch loaded and I'll be making some adjustments to that in a moment. But before I get into the Zebra 2 comb filter, let's look at what comb filtering is in reality. So let me just move these windows out of the way. I have the Zebra 2 on track 1 right now and I'm just going to deactivate that so we don't hear it. And I have two different tracks here, track two with a white noise clip and a saw wave clip and track three with the same clips. And if I play the white noise from track two, in fact let me clear clips so I'm only hearing white noise on track two. Okay so let me do that again. So it looks pretty familiar. We've got the oscillator look down at the bottom here looking just showing the noise waveform and then the frequency spectrum I actually have it zoomed in but if I zoom out going all the way across the board we have equal energy levels at all frequencies and that by definition is what white noise consists of and an interesting thing happens if we add a copy of the signal but delay it and to do that I'm going to play the second track here or track three And right now they're both playing at the same time, so there is no delay between the two. But in Ableton Live, I can adjust this track delay at the bottom, or if I inserted a delay effect, or did something to delay this track 3 from track 2, we get what's called comb filtering occurring. So let me demonstrate what that is. I'm going to do that just by playing it, and then I'll bump this up in 1 millisecond increments. And what we're hearing is the cancellation and reinforcement of certain harmonics present, well, in the case of white noise, certain frequencies present in the signal due to that delay. So the delayed copy is interfering with the original copy here, which is on track two. And this shape that you see in the spectrum analyzer is indicative of comb filtering. This is what it looks like. So if I zoom in a little bit, scroll across we see these big gaps that have been created in the frequency curve like here, right in here. Normally that would be straight across if we didn't have that delay, but because of the delay of one millisecond, those frequencies have been canceled out, and then these other ones have been somewhat reinforced. And if I do it again with a go up to a two millisecond delay, then these spikes get narrower as well as the gaps, and Depending on the delay setting, we could have very narrow spikes as well as the signal itself if we compare the white noise to a saw wave, for example. So let me just play the saw wave. So for example with a one millisecond delay with the saw wave we get this pattern of interference and reinforcement. And this is called comb filtering. This is what it looks like. In fact it's reminiscent of a hair comb. So when you get these spikes depending on what kind of signal you're processing. And that's where it gets the name. So that's the gist of it. Now a large number of different types of sounds can be created by creative use of comb filtering and that's what we're going to do by using the Zebra 2 comb filter. So let me go ahead and just mute tracks 2 and 3 and now we'll go back to track 1 here. Okay so I'm starting with the initialize patch and this is just the saw wave so if I play a note, in fact let me make sure that I've armed that track for MIDI input. So if I play a note 
We see the saw wave shape here as well as the harmonic spectrum analyzer display here. So right now I'm going to get rid of oscillator 1 and I'm going to add a comb filter. And this comb filter is capable of producing sound on its own. It does not need an input source. It can filter an input source. So by that, I mean, if I had an oscillator up here, it can be a filter on that, but it doesn't have to be. So I'm going to remove this oscillator for a moment and focus on just the comb filter itself generating the noise. Toward the end of the video, I'll show how we can add an oscillator here and filter that as well. So internally, the comb filter has three different what are called impulses that it can generate. It can generate a noise impulse, a saw, and a square. Okay. If you're not familiar with what the term impulse really means, is I can kind of simulate an impulse using oscillator one over here in lane two. Let me mute lane one for a moment. But if I took oscillator one, lane two, it's being modulated, the volume's being modulated by envelope one. If I basically turn sustain all the way down, release all the way down, get rid of the velocity, and just use the decay, I can create what's called an impulse. So let me, I'm just going to start tapping notes on the keyboard. You can see the MIDI here, but we don't hear anything. But as soon as I start to bring up the decay, we'll see an impulse come by in the oscillator and the spectrum analyzer. Okay, that's just a short burst of sound. That's all an impulse really is. So I could replace this oscillator with a noise generator and generate a noise impulse. Okay. That would be an impulse. And that's basically what the comb filter is doing internally with the noise, saw, and square. All right. So let me remove this, unmute lane one. Now, in order to have sound come from the comb filter, we need to use a control here called prefill. And what this control does is it affects the volume of the impulse. Okay, so let me just turn that up. So now we see the impulse come through. And if we want to have that sound sustain for a longer period of time, we need to use the feedback control because it's not really using the envelope generator yet because it's just this very short impulse. But if we increase the feedback a little bit, that impulse will be fed back into the comb filter and slowly decay over time. And then the, the length of time would be dependent on how much feedback we are applying. So let me demonstrate that and I'll just keep hitting. But in fact, I do need to go ahead and set the envelope up so that we can hear it. And so what I'll do is I'll just set sustain all the way up to 100% and give a bit of a release and so now we hear that impulse and let me redo that let me do that again with just slower mouse movement so if I bring release all the way up you can hear that, you know, based on the previous tutorials that we've done in the course, you would think that this note would sustain for much longer. In fact, if I brought oscillator one in with just the default saw wave and I mute lane one, envelope one is modulating the volume on lane two. So if I play a note, that's how long that release is affecting that sound, okay? If I mute that and play the comb filter, it decayed much quicker, much faster, because this feedback is causing the comb filter decay to be much more rapid than what this release is set for. So if I increase the feedback, Now it's pretty much being governed by this release. In fact, let's see if that's true. Let's have both of these play together. Mm. 
Yeah. So they both fade at the same time. So in effect, they're both being controlled by this release value here. So let me get rid of this. And now we have a signal coming from comb one. I'm going to lower the feedback a bit. And with the noise, it sounds kind of metallic, right? But there's different modes here. So before I demonstrate the different modes, let's try a saw impulse and see how that sounds. Or a square. Let me try the saw and the noise. Okay, now if we try a different mode here, different modes, I'll go through them, split comb. And each one of these modes just gives it a different character. Okay, so let me try the split dual. Diff comb. Dissonant. Sounds metallic, kind of like chimes. Cluster, that's what the Zebra 2 manufacturers call a experimental mode, and they say it may be removed in the future. Right now it's not making anything with noise or saw, so with the current settings it doesn't seem to produce anything. So you can experiment with that one. Blown is more for like a blown instrument, a wind instrument. And then we can try the different modes on the different impulses, like a saw. Okay, now tune and detune, those do what you would expect them to do. Vibrato. Dampening is a basically a low-pass filter control, and the more you bring this up, the lower the low-pass filter cutoff frequency is set, so it has the effect of rolling off the high end. So let me move this over and demonstrate that. I'm going to set this to noise. Increase the feedback. can change the tonality of the sound using this tone, flavor, and distort.
And then finally, if we look at having the comb filter actually filter an input, let's go ahead and add a oscillator one. And let me disable the comb for a moment. Maybe set up some stacked oscillator waveforms, detune it a bit. And then bring in the comb filter, and this time we'll set prefill to zero, which means we're not going to hear any of the internal impulse. So if I disable oscillator one, we won't hear anything because prefill is all the way at zero. And we want to set input, bring input up. So now we have oscillator one enabled, it's flowing through the comb filter, and input basically sets the level of the input to the comb filter. So let's do that. And again, this is where you really just need to spend some time experimenting with the module, getting a feel for what the different sounds are based on the mode as well as the impulse or depending on whatever your source sound is. Just do a little bit of experimentation just to get a, a general feel for what types of sounds you can make with this module. And here on final thing is the output and if I bring up you can mix this dry signal actually allows us to mix the dry unaffected input with the actual filtered input so just to demonstrate that so that's the unfiltered input because I've got dry all the way up to 100 And then remember too that because this is on lane one, then you can make changes to the envelope. So if we wanted a pad, more of a pad type sound. And in the next video, you'll see a practical application of the comb filter as we program another Adam Sabo lead sound. I'll see you in the next video.